British Superlight Championship, sponsored by WantToLiveAfloat.com. And welcome to Blighton Park in Lincolnshire for round four of the 2013 British Superlight Championship. Plenty of action coming your way for the next hour as we take a look at 650 Superlight Race 1. Jake Swan's the fastest man in qualifying and sets himself up on pole position on the front row with Paul Hudson and Tony Turner. On row two is Anthony Jackson with Phil Redfern and Gordon Knox. On row three is Danny Kerwood with Tim Page and Wayne Stockbridge. And on row four is Michael Bradbury and Joe Walton. So alongside me in commentary once again is Luke Jameson. Dave did and the race director points the drivers to the starting lights. They get away and it looks like a great start for Jake Swan. Time to look at his mirrors. Also Tony Turner in second place just looking in his mirrors to see that Anthony Jackson in the number 41 machine has got himself into third place. And I think possibly Danny Kerwood has pinched a place from Phil Redfern. He is there in the uh, camouflage livery and Phil Redfern in fifth. So a uh, great start from Jake Swan there and he manages to get out front but it looked a little bit tight going into the dirt section there Chris. Yeah Tim Page putting it all sorts of sideways but Jake Swan gets away. What I did notice is Paul Hudson should have been starting on the front row as per the graphic that we just showed and actually started at the back of the grid and didn't seem to get away that quickly either so problems I suspect for number four Paul Hudson who perhaps should be giving Jake Swan and uh, Tony Turner to be fair a little bit more of a challenge but at the moment we'll keep number 41 Anthony Jackson there giving Chase the turn turn at fourth third place. There is Danny Kerwood then, and the number seven super light. Yeah, Danny Kerwood uh, got uh, some problems there, and he's moved a little bit further down the uh, grid now, and uh, that man in front of him is uh, number 47, and that's Gordon Knox, but that man oh. in the number 41 machine just picking up a cone there behind Tony Turner. He's being chased down by number 50, Phil Redfern. And Phil running very wide onto the start-finish straight there, Chris, but uh, definitely carrying plenty of pace. That's a beautiful day for a cone. I hope he got a flight with it. But Tony Turner there in second place. Uh, well, at the moment, just trying to gain a little bit of a gap over Anthony Jackson in third, but he's actually closing the gap. And this is the bit as uh, Tony Turner is having a big look in his wing mirror to see Anthony Jackson having a look up the inside, pulling it tight, trying to get the power down. But what an incredible slide. Beautiful throttle and steering control, to be fair, from Tony Turner there to slide his way from the tarmac onto the dirt section, taking on that ski slope. And the man from York is looking pretty comfortable in the second place, it has to be said, Luke. Yeah, fair play to Tony Turner. We'll see uh, as he comes through the dirt section now, as you just said, he's really good at balancing the car on the throttle and steering input. He just does those rally cross and rally style slides, the power slide, and he keeps it all very organised. That looks like Paul Hudson, number four, just coming up to be lapped by these guys. So Paul definitely got a problem running slow, actually pulling off into the pits there, Chris. So you were right to point out that Paul had some sort of problem uh, that kept him off the front of the grid. And uh, unfortunately for him, no points in race number one after qualifying so well. Yeah, sadly, I can't tell you what that issue is at the moment. Maybe we will find out. But Jake Swan, of course, already passed him by the time we saw uh, Tony Turner in second place making his way past. So, uh, as you say, look, you know, Jake cleared off into the distance. And, uh, yeah, it looks like he's running away with this. And really putting one hand on, the, on that championship uh, trophy for the end of the year. Because, you know, four rounds in, he's really back some points now. Well, he has, but it has to be said that in the last round at Finley, Jake Swan, there he is, as, uh, as we see him doing what he's been accustomed to doing in the first couple of rounds this year, looking really good and really on the pace, but he had an absolute nightmare. No fun whatsoever for Jake Swan at Finley, and he had that coming together in race two that put him out of the race and then started from the back of the grid in race three. So he's got to make up those points that maybe he lost uh, in, uh, in round three at Finley, and this is the place to do it because there's a lot of tarmac at this circuit. Well, going up the inside, Jake Swan then passing the back marker, Michael Bradbury in the number 100 Super Light. I think making his debut today in this uh, round four of the British Championship, but great to see new drivers always taking part. If you want any more information, of course, have a look at the Norris Sport website or the Dracout website, of course, and uh, try and uh, find some information because it's uh, 
quite easy to get signed up and uh, have a go at this uh, super bike racing. Great fun as well. I had a go myself at Cadwell Park. And at the moment, Jake Swan's just showing, showing how much fun it is in the 650 class out in front. You just reminded me of something that made me want to sulk because I didn't get to have a go at Cadwell Park. But there, the man in the number 21 machine, Wayne Stockbridge, is definitely having a go. And oh. Danny Kerwood has uh, run unfeasibly wide there and maybe even retiring. But that man is the leader of this race, Jake Swan, out front at the moment. And Jake definitely having lots of fun on the dry stuff. That man, Phil Redfern, a bit of an old hand at this. Uh, apologies for the word use of the word old there, Phil. But uh, I meant in, in terms of him uh, being very experienced. And that man there in the 84 machine is uh, definitely coming under the sort of attention he'd probably rather not have last lap flag is out and this is going to be a battle to the finish because they've also got a deal with a back marker but out front Jake Swan still doing the business Chris with just about a lap to go yeah and of course it's always that difficult part where uh, you know perhaps uh, I'm not quite sure of his racing experience but a back marker could well get in the way and hinder uh, Tony Turner who looked like he was having a, a fiery battle and uh, concentrating more on what was going on behind him I said it before actually that Tony but you know often concerned about who's driving behind him and putting himself under pressure but out in front with half a lap or just under half a lap to go Jake Swan looks set fair to take the check of flag here so Jake Swan coming up towards the line to take the chequered flag and the race win in the first race of the day in the 650 Super Lights. Yeah, great race win for Jake Swan then in the 650 class. And 35 points in his pocket. Let's take a look at the official results then. Jake Swan going away with 35. Tony Turner going away with second place and 32 points ahead of Anthony Jackson, who goes away with 34, his third place. And Phil Redfern, Tim Page, Gordon Knox, Wayne Stockbridge, Michael Bradbury, Danny Kerwood, and Paul Hudson, the contingent, completing the lineup on the top 10 for 650 Superlight race number one. So, without any further ado, let's get straight on with the action for race one of the open class and take a look at the lineup for this. Duncan McBeth is the fastest man in qualifying and starts in pole position for Open Super Light race number one. Then James Addy alongside him with Phil Lee on the front row. On row two is Mark Richardson with Jonathan Bennett and Danny Whitney on the outside of row number two. On row three is uh, Simon Nutter with uh, James Stevens and Alan Henley. And on row four is uh, Charlie Wellborn completing the lineup then for Open Super Light race number one. So the drivers on the grid for the first open super light race of the day. Race director Dave Dearden pointing the guys to those lights as they go out. The guys get off the start and a Whoa. bit of a problem there. I think Phil Lee just getting across the front of James Addy there, but James uh, going up over the back of the uh, the wheels there. And that was a little bit awkward. Yeah, and Jonathan Bennett on the inside getting hustled there. I think with Duncan McBeth, who we briefly rode on board with. So Phil Lee's out in front and uh, Duncan McBeth actually in second place. So Phil Lee uh, got a place up from the starting position there, making... Full use of being on the front row, and uh, yeah, great start there for Phil Lee. Duncan McBeth in second place. Jonathan Bennett up into third, past James Addy then. So, yeah, uh, James Addy seemed to run a little bit wider. Jonathan Bennett just uh, didn't uh, sort of look, look at the, the gift horse in the mouth, as it were, when opportunity knocks, he just sneaks straight through. So James Addy drops down to fourth place with uh, Mark Richardson in fifth in that yellow super light behind him. And I think oh. that's uh, number 72, Jonathan Bennett, having done brilliantly and got himself uh, into third place. He's just totally spun it in the dirt section there. Has he got on the gas too much? Well, I was just about to say Jonathan Bennett doing so well because he started in fifth and really worked his way through there and he's uh, created all sorts of chaos there with number 52, uh, James Stevens, and number 46, that's Alan Henley, Henley being yeah. held up as well. So those guys got stuck in a car park that uh, was of the creation of uh, number 72, Jonathan Bennett. Fortunately for James Addy, it looked like he was able to sneak through. And there he is in fourth place, I think. Also, Danny Whitney sneaked through there as well. So uh, those two locked in battle now. And I dare say this one will be interesting for the next couple of laps. Yeah, Mark Richardson ahead now. Addy goes around the outside. Can he get the power down? He completely overslides it. Massive oversteer there for him. And it allows Danny Whitby surely to get away now. There is number 74. That's Charlie Wellborn. And uh, really having a bit of a race of his own. But uh, I think uh, I think he actually got uh, blocked in the uh, tail end of that uh, manoeuvre from uh, number 72, Jonathan Bennett there. 
Yeah, Jonathan Bennett had that problem and a couple of the guys got stuck behind, but it's difficult to know who managed to sneak through. Probably some of the guys who were a bit further back, as you were saying, Charlie Welbo may have been far enough back to actually manage to avoid it, but the guys immediately behind him, James had he snuck round immediately. The other two guys uh, just looked to have got caught up in... Uh, in uh, Jonathan's accident but at the moment 56 that's Danny Whitney being chased down by that man 698 James Addy and you can see James Addy just looking for the turning point number 72 that's the man we were talking about Jonathan Bennett he's recovered now and he's, he's definitely got some pace in this race Chris but uh, just overcooked it a little bit and uh, he went a little bit wide there onto the dusty stuff yeah a bit of a bumpy uh, bumpy ride for him that as he's uh, getting the power down there but to be fair Jonathan's driving really well today I mean you know barring the mistake he made on the dirt section I think he may have learned from that pretty quickly but it's so difficult because there's a little bit of a blue groove emerging just around that bit of the track now but it's also still very dusty perhaps we'll get some water on it in a bit which will uh, add a little bit of grit to it or actually it could go the other way it could uh, maybe make it a little bit of clay in the base there uh, you know turn that into a little bit more sludge and uh, then they'll just find massive understeer yeah, it could, be, it could be a very tricky decision to decide whether to put some water on to keep the dust down. Because as you say, Chris, rightly, you could uh, suddenly end up with some very, very icy conditions because the, uh, the clay-based dirt has been really baked by the sun and the wind. And it looks like James Addy's managing to dive up the inside of Danny Whitby. Does he make it stick? No, Danny Whitby holds on. Yes, then he, he runs does. wide. I think Addy's got it through. Yes, he has. James Addy threads the needle and takes third place. Uh, sorry, fourth place, actually. Mark Richardson, I apologise. You're in third place at the moment big look in the rear mirror for James Addy loads of understeer as Danny Whitney managed to get back at him no Addy holds on at the moment but as I said Chris this one these two are going to be uh, locked in battle for a couple of laps to come no doubt yeah I think he needs that warning on his mirror objects in the mirror may actually be closer than they appear and that's Danny Whitney right behind him uh, giving chase here and it'd be interesting to see actually whether Danny can come back at Addy Addy a very uh, well quite a first driver of course this year just made the transition over from supermoto bike racing into the Superlight Championship through injury but actually you know uh, does a lot of karting and spends quite a bit of time in the winter I think out in Tenerife as well at the kart circuit where uh, he uh, does quite a bit of driving too from what I gather so uh, really taking on the challenge of competing in this British Superlight Championship and to be fair doing pretty well at it yeah, number 72, Jonathan Bennett, also just trying to get to grips, find that level of grip. He's in the blue groove at the moment, coming through the dirt section, back onto the tarmac stuff. But he's just uh, had a couple of problems as he's gone through this tarmac section. It's a little bit twisty into a right-hander, then a tight left-hander, and he's just got to get the entry into this straight right so he can really carry the speed through without running wide. A little bit better that time, didn't get onto the dirt, but that man, as you were just talking about, Chris, 698, James Addy, done quite a bit of karting, and he's been pretty much on the pace since he got into one of these carts and been quick. There is the last lap flag for Duncan McBeth. Addy was second in, uh, I think, the second round in terms of qualifying behind Duncan. That was James's first round in the Superlights, having uh, had those problems with his wrists when he tried to do Supermoto in the first round of this year's championship. But uh, dare say that James Addy could go from strength to strength over the season and maybe chase down this man, 150, Duncan McBeth. Yeah, and look at the gap that uh, Duncan McBeth got over Phil Lee now to say uh, Phil Lee was ahead before and a uh, quick hand up there from Phil Lee. I'm not sure if he was waving or frustration. Man. I think he was waving to say how good was my uh, power slider around that corner and then nice. he was giving himself five out of five. Uh, I reckon, but uh, yeah, maybe high fives, but uh, no one can get near him at the moment. So, uh, But yeah, we're riding on board with that uh, rear view facing from uh, Duncan McBeth and just interesting to see the gap there. There is Phil Lee there and Mark Richardson of course in third place Mark's having a good season and uh, good to see him with a result like this too Jonathan Bennett's still plugging away there as we're picking up the actual 46 Alan Henley he's a, a back marker I do believe as 150 Duncan McBeth taking the checker flag then for Open Superlight race number one fantastic win then for him and more points yet on his championship tally so 35 points go to the Open Superlight Race 1 winner Duncan McBeth ahead of Phil Lee in second place and Mark Richardson in third then James Addy Danny Whitmy Charlie Wellborn Jonathan Bennett James Stevens and Alan Henley are the nine drivers competing in Open Superlight Race number 1 so plenty of action already at this Blyton Park circuit in Lincolnshire so far today we've seen some great wins already in the first two races one of course from uh, Duncan McBeth in the open class and not forget of course a great win from Jake Swan in the 650 class let's see how he gets on after the break join us in a few
The British Superlight Championship, sponsored by WantToLiveAfloat.com. The British Superlight Championship, sponsored by WantToLiveAfloat.com. Welcome back to Blighton as we move on to 650 Superlight race number two. Jake Swan, the man with his second pole position of the day, starts on the front row with Tony Turner and Anthony Jackson. Phil Redfern goes off the inside of row two with Tim Page and Gordon Knox. Wayne Stockbridge goes off the inside of row three with Michael Bradbury and Danny Kerwood. And on row four is Paul Hudson, subject to uh, mechanical gremlins, um, enabling him to get out on circuit for this one. There's Jake Swan then, second pole position for Jake of the day, and that's the number 41 machine of Anthony Jackson on the grid there. Dave Durden points the guys at the lights, the lights go out, and away they go, and it's another... Oh, and more problems for uh, Paul Hudson at the back there, and a great onboard shot then from Jake Swan with uh, Tony Turner right up his exhaust there. Yeah, I'm just wondering if Paul Hudson maybe got a problem with his clutch assembly and uh, that's why it's not getting him off the line. And, and in the end, he, uh, in race one, he had to uh, pull into the pit. So it'll be interesting to see whether he keeps going. Jake Swan is out front. Business as usual for Jake. Great start in race number one and another great start in race number two. Tony Turner in second place at the moment. Tim Page, I think, in third. And we'll just see the way this pans out. But it's a fantastic low onboard shot from Jake Swan's uh, 110 machine there and you can see the man in second place there Tony Turner in the number 84 machine trying to chase him down getting very sideways as he enters the dirt section there's Danny Kerwood in the number 7 camouflage livery machine being chased down by I think number 47 there and number 21 Wayne Stockbridge just uh, having a bit of an excursion off track and managing to avoid the cones Chris yeah, doing very well to dodge those. There's a, there's a real battle on here between these two. And moving out of the slipstream, up the inside goes... Uh, God, and Knox there, managing to get the pass, Chris. And that's the 100 machine of Michael Bradbury. He's uh, another one having an excursion off circuit. Yeah, maybe just uh, outbreaked himself a little bit. Very easy to do, and uh, I'm certainly not the first person to have uh, ever done that on that last corner there in the run-up to the finish line. Now going very, very deep. Um, Goes, uh, Gordon Knox again Gordon just Knox. getting a big problem with the brakes and he's uh, been passed by Danny Kerwood so that fantastic pass down the start finish straight from uh, Gordon Knox and uh, then he's got it all wrong going into the dirt section and Danny Kerwood's just kept a cool head and sneaked through. It really is a case of keeping a cool head on that corner because you can absolutely stop the vehicle dead there because it's such a difficult corner with it being an absolute hairpin but with the surface change as well trying to get the power down and literally Danny Kilwood must have stopped his super light you know completely you know on a on a one pence piece if you like there to to be able to turn it so tight and just nip up the inside getting the power down yeah we've talked about this before it's the old adage isn't it it's it's fast in and slow out and that's what happened there Gordon knocks in too fast so came out slow Danny Kilwood did it the other way around slow in fast out got the place now, interesting, four drivers all the way down that big long straight, which is the passing point here at Blyson, or certainly one of the main passing points, and no one actually making a move. In fact, if anything, uh, then just moving out slightly offline to drive defensively and block the opportunity is there's a Phil Redfern at the back of this train here, putting pressure on uh, uh, Anthony Jackson there, and... Uh, Anthony Jackson and Phil Redfern both managing to uh, force the issue and push their way past Gordon Knox. So again, in that same position on the track, maybe Gordon's inexperience just showing and he's made another Horlicks of it a little bit and lost another two places. It's twice that's happened to me in this race. So every time I look down at the telemetry, someone pulls a pin and goes for a pass. But uh, yeah, Phil Redfern steaming his way through here. Yeah, Phil Redfern looking very, very pacey and very keen to try and get past Anthony Jackson. But to be fair, Anthony Jackson's got himself sorted out Quick look in the mirrors from Anthony, but he looks to be uh, more interested in trying to get himself past Danny Kerwood. There's the man, Gordon Knox. Nice pace down the uh, start finish straight. You'll see Gordon's got a good quick super light underneath him, but just the inexperience maybe showing as he just uh, wasn't getting his braking points right in this next part, which is the dirt section. We'll have to see what happens this time because I think Phil Redfern has got an idea of uh, maybe getting himself a little bit further forward. Well, normally pretty defiant, and normally what it's his way through the field to be fair, but uh, I've got to feel sorry, uh, well, in fact, as Anthony Jackson pulls the pin and gets past Danny Kerwood there too in this tray also, but then locks it up, Phil Redfern's through, taking full advantage of that, as you predicted, Luke. Absolute textbook move there, but, you know, just goes to show exactly what I was saying, is there's a Vulcan bomber flying overhead. 
I mean, how many times to see that? Great to see that thing back in flight. I know we're digressing from the races ever so slightly, but what a fantastic view. I think coming into Robin Hood Airport, if I am not mistaken. Back with the action then. There's Tony Turner. He's in second place. And I wonder if he caught a glimpse of that. I was just going to say the exact same thing. I wonder if any of the drivers were sort of driving down the start finish straight, looking out the top of the superlight going, what? Back on board with Jake Swan now, and there's no sign of that Vulcan bomber anywhere from Jake Swan's on board. He'll be relieved to know that he's not being chased down by a Vulcan bomber. So but interesting to see there. Sorry to cut you off there, Luke, is that Jake's actually coming past the back marker there. Uh, I think that was Michael Bradbury, number 100. But there was so much debris that he could see coming off his back tyres there. And it's so interesting because it's such a long way from the last part of the dirt section there to see the debris flying out of the deep tread um, cuts because they're all racing on wet tyres here by the looks of things to get the grip on the dirt. You know, he's gone through four corners there, or three corners certainly, from the dirt section before actually the dirt's actually getting out of the tyre treads. And that's going to cause grip problems for these guys at the end of the day. Yeah, absolutely. And you could just see, talking about uh, causing problems, that uh, Phil Redfern looks like he's uh, very keen on causing some problems for that man in the number 69 machine. Um, that's Tim Page coming under the close attentions of Phil Redfern. And uh, we've seen Phil force the issue in the past. And uh, he's, uh, he's usually uh, pretty fair in terms of his racing, but he's also very, very positive, And he will just keep pushing the issue until the checkered flag. So uh, Tim Page has a job on his hands to keep all the third place at the moment. Yeah, the real aggressive driving style from Phil Redfern, putting all the pressure on Tim Page. He looks left, he looks right in his wing mirrors and uh, trying to see where the challenge will mount. I suspect it's going to be here if Redfern can get the power down. He goes out wide though, over the rumble strips, pulls it back to the inside. Page moving across a little bit, defensive line right over the white line on the inside, but it's still the course going out very, very wide. Phil Redfern there pulls the pin, makes the pass, and he's up yet another place, Luke. Yeah, absolutely fantastic performance from Phil Redfern. A couple of laps there where Phil was definitely at Dukes of Hazard style in hot pursuit, but he got his man and nailed it. And now, uh, 69, Tim Page trying to go around the outside of Phil Redfern. He was uh, very uh, optimistic there. There was no way Phil was going to let him get away with that one. But meanwhile, the man out front in the 1-1-0 machine, that's Jake Swan. And again, Jake having it all his own way in this race, Chris. Absolutely, and totally unlike the Dukes of Hazard boys. Uh, trying to keep himself well out of trouble as he takes the chequered flag. A great victory then for Jake Swan. For the second time today in 6.50, Superlight race number two. 35 points then to Jake ahead of Tony Turner once again, claiming second place. This time with Phil Redfern battling his way through to third to take 30 points ahead of Tim Page, Anthony Jackson, Danny Kerwood, Gordon Knox, Wayne Stockbridge, Michael Bradbury and Paul Hudson. The top 10 in 6.50, Superlight race number two. On we go then with the action of the Open Superlight class, race number two. Duncan McBeth taking his second pole position also of the afternoon today with Phil Lee and Mark Richardson on the outside. And row two is James Addy with Danny Whitney and Charlie Wellborn. On row three is Jonathan Bennett with James Stevens and uh, Alan Henley completing the lineup then. And just three rows of drivers. So that's nine drivers in total in open superlight exploration number two. Here we go then on the grid with Mark Richardson and Phil Lee and off pole position this time will be the man in the 150 machine, Duncan McBeth, the race winner in open super light race one of the day here at Blyton Park. Dave Dearden points the guys towards the lights. The lights go out and it's a fairly good start from everybody there. This time maybe a little bit cleaner. Phil Lee uh, keeping his nose clean this time. He's the one who gets squeezed a little bit. Mark Richardson, good start from him. Tried to go around the outside of Duncan McBeth for a moment, but Duncan held his line. So Mark Richardson in second place. Duncan McBeth holds on to pole position in first of Phil Lee in third place with that man in the number 72 machine. Oh, and Mark gone wide and lost two places there is Phil Lee and I think Jonathan Bennett squeezing through there into uh, second or third places. So after an absolutely brilliant start from Mark, he's uh, made that mistake on that tricky bend that we spoke about previously and uh, it's cost him two places there. Yeah, Jonathan Bennett in the number 72 machine looking in his mirrors to see that man, Mark Richardson in the number 17 super light. He's been relegated from third, from second to fourth place and uh, a couple of places made up by Phil Lee and Jonathan Bennett. So Duncan McBeth still the man out front in first place at the moment. Mark Richardson in fourth and I think Mark being chased down by number 698. 
James Addy, that's the top five at the moment with Danny Whitney down in six, just a little bit further back. Oh, and Mark again, Richardson goes Richardson, very wide there. He's doing a bit of farming out there, just ploughing the field. Oh, well, two passes there. I think James uh, Addy there coming through as Jonathan Bennett makes the move uh, back on Phil Lee there too. Yeah, Jonathan Bennett moving up into second place. So we did say in race number one that Jonathan Bennett had some really good pace. He's just got to hold on to it through this dirt section because he was I losing it before. I think Abby, lo uh, sorry, Phil Lee rather, locked up there. And uh, that cost him, in fact, actually probably blocking the line a bit from James Addy, the man behind him too. Yeah, that's definitely given some breathing space to Jonathan Bennett, actually, in second place. So uh, Jonathan will have been fairly relieved to see that there was a bit of a problem for the guys behind him. So Phil Lee in third place now coming under the attention of that man, James Addy, in fourth. And we've said James Addy has been quick all year, but he's just had a couple of uh, issues here and there where things have not quite worked out for him. Maybe, like you've said, a little bit of experience. He's been more used to riding uh, the supermoto bikes and uh, four wheels is a little bit different. But it looks Ooh. like Addy's getting a great pass on there. We've not seen too many uh, passes at that point. Phil Lee just getting a bit of wheel spin and James Addy sorting out the acceleration, getting the traction and he picks up another place and moves up into third place. Mark Richardson dropping a little bit further down the field, now coming under the attentions of Danny Whitney. Just going back to James Addy's pass, I mean that was classic. Right? James being a very aggressive driver and uh, sliding it, I suppose driving a super light in a fun way, you know, putting it sideways and it's absolutely brilliant fun to do. But by the same token it was Phil Lee that was perhaps a little bit aggressive uncharacteristically really and put it sideways and by the fact that his wheels weren't all driving forward James had to pinch that place by keeping it honest coming out of the corner and just nip straight up the inside where to be fair I wouldn't have said it was a, a strong passing opportunity of course it's a little straight to get the power down but not a big passing place, so uh, Addy did well to make that step. Yeah, I think James Addy has probably been uh, paying a little bit of attention to uh, what Duncan McBeth can do, because Duncan McBeth's style is very, very tidy. He, uh, he never is overzealous, never, he's never seen too much sort of sliding the back end and all that sort of stuff. He's very much one of those drivers who uh, keeps the, uh, the wheels in a straight line, because that means you're going forward, not sideways, and going forward is definitely faster than going sideways. Well, this super light uh, racing is... You know, very similar in a lot of ways to rallycross, of course, Blight and a well-known rallycross circuit, but by the same token, you know, it's still motor racing and the fastest way is to keep the wheels in line, isn't it? Absolutely, that's the, the perhaps the only exception being the speedway where you've got to have it sliding and some rally rally events and rally cross, it's, it's definitely a requirement to be going sideways at some points, but those guys a little bit further down the field, that's number 46 and at number 52, Alan Henley and James Stevens having a battle of their own and we can see which one of them gets the better. <laughs> Looking at each other, I think there was a nod from 52, James Stevens, to say, thank you very much, sir, I just did you. <laughs> and it was a great move as well, and, and again, that classic move down the main straight. Now, Jonathan Bennett coming under the attention of James Addy. Addy going out wide, but see how uh, honest he's keeping the super light, and he's having another look up the inside to see if he can make that move stick. Again, that he pulled on Phil Lee. Uh, I think James, uh, sorry, Jonathan Bennett's uh, a little bit more wise to it uh, this time around. The last lap flag is out, but a big wing mirror full of James Addy. He moves to the left, he moves to the right. Having a look here, and it's interesting to see the flex in the carbon fibre on James Addy's roof. Now he has a look at the inside. Oh, two wheels there for James Addy. He gets a cone stuck and he's super light too there as he enters the dirt section. And it all went wrong for him. He was trying on that last lap. Two moves that he'd done previously in the day. One down that short straight and one up the inside going into that first turn. And uh, neither of them quite paid off for James Addy there. Now James Addy was trying to look for the cut back there, he did, chucked the dummy out wide and then uh, tried to sneak back up the inside but uh, Jonathan Bennett was having none of that, far too wise for that business but a little bit of understeer there for Duncan. Ooh, massive understeer, <laughs> whoa! Yes, uh, oh, very how, lucky. Just saying how tidy he was and he nearly collects a massive a sequence of three hay bales but I think Duncan Macbeth has done enough kept it all in order and on the black stuff and he'll come through to take another race win in the second super light race of the day in the open category yeah great race win a slightly lucky last lap there or certainly last bend because uh, clipping that hay bale could have lost him a wheel and cost him that race but uh, a well earned victory nevertheless for Duncan Macbeth then in open super light race two 35 points to him ahead of Jonathan Bennett in second place James Addy steals third place ahead of Phil Lee Mark Richardson, Danny Whitby, Charlie Wellborn, James Stevens, and Alan Henley, the nine drivers in open super light race number two. So plenty of action, it's getting very interesting here at Blyton Park. 
this afternoon. Of course, we've seen some great race wins so far from the second race of the day for Duncan McBeth and that very, very lucky last lap for him. And of course, great race win for Jake Swan. Let's see how he gets on in 6.50 race three after this break. British Superlight Championship, sponsored by wantsaliverfloat.com. The British Superlight Championship, sponsored by wantsaliverfloat.com. Welcome back to Blyton Park. It's all going on as we move on to race three, the final race of the day for the 650 class. Jake Swan, his third pole position of the day with Tony Turner and Phil Redfern on the front row in this then. On row two is Tim Page with Anthony Jackson and Danny Kerwood in P6. In P7 on row three is Gordon Knox with Wayne Stockbridge and Michael Bradbury. And on row four is Paul Hudson, again subject to those mechanical gremlins that, to be fair, have plagued him all day. So let's hope Paul can have a better start in this one. A quick wave then from Phil Redfern. He's happy and set fair ready to go in this loop. Yeah, Tony Turner second on the grid and the man in pole position for the third race of the day, Jake Swan, pole position in qualifying. If he can get this one in the bag, that will be pole position and three race wins. So that's the job done entirely. There's the start. Gone. Jake's got off the line. He's in first place into the first turn. And we've got a nice on board from Tim Page currently in third place behind number 84, Tony Turner in second. Jake Swan out front again in the 1-1-0 machine, Chris. Just see how much debris flying up from those... Uh, from those tyres and of course uh, the drivers you know feeling the roost in, uh, in the driving seat here from those as, uh, as well and I can tell you it hurts. I can also tell you that uh, there was probably about two inches between the onboard camera on the machine of Tim Page in third place there and Tony Turner in front of him in second. There's Danny Kerwood a little bit further down the field coming under the attentions of Gordon Knox and I think that's Phil Redford forcing the issue again in that same point on the track Phil Redford getting the better of Gordon Knox again. Gordon's not got himself sorted out in that bit of the track and I think the day's coming to an end before he's got his sussed. Yeah, Phil Redford absolutely been steaming his way through in contact there with uh, the rear wheel of Danny Kerwood there. Whether Kerwood saw the challenge from real Phil Redford, but he's just trying to hustle him out of the way. Massive understeer there for Redford. Gordon Knox has a look at coming back at him, but is there a way through? His line very much uh, defended there as he comes out of uh, that uh, second to last turn there. But Phil Redfern defiant here and looking to uh, gain a place. Now, have we got a battle here between, between Tim Page and Anthony Jackson, number 69, our 41 here? Yeah, Anthony Jackson and Tim Page battling for second place at the moment. That's Tim in the 69 machine. There's the uh, that battle that we were seeing before. That's Phil Redford trying to force the issue with Danny Kerwood and try and see if he can get up the inside. Some really fantastic wheel-to-wheel -wheel battling here. And is Phil Redford going around the outside? He is. Has he managed to pick it stick? Side by side he's and he's Danny deep. Kerwood's coming back to him. No, Phil Redford's made it stick. Another brilliant performance in that part of the circuit from Phil Redford. And now he's going to uh, disappear off into the distance. Amazing driving. A great big power slide all the way over for that transitional uh, section that we saw Tony Turner doing a little bit earlier on so get the power down here is Tim Page there number 69 with the attentions of number 41 Anthony Jackson snapping at his heels as well and it's a real great battling going on here at Blyton Park Tim Page having a look in his wing mirror filled by uh, filled, <laughs> filled by Anthony Jackson uh, behind him now will he throw him the dummy and try and go wide and then cut back to the inside Jackson has a look in his wing mirror it looks more like he's uh, looking for the defence rather than the attack here to get past Tim Page I wonder if he feels like he's got the pace now understeer from uh, Tim Page and I wonder if that was going to give Anthony the chance to get through here it hasn't done so far though Luke yeah, Tim Page looked very, very nervous coming down that start finish straight. He was looking in his mirrors, not where he was going. He was looking in his mirrors. Oh, That's contact the reason why. Him through! Yeah, Tim Page made that mistake again in that section of the track, the dirt section. You could just see that he was really feeling the pressure from the man behind him, Anthony Jackson. And Jackson's just forced the issue, kept it clean. The mistakes come, and Anthony Jackson pouches and pick, pounces and picks up third place. Oh, just see the dust on the onboard camera now, uh, picking up all that. Uh, 
debris there. You can really see that blue groove emerging on that top dirt section. No water been put down by the looks of things, so it's a little bit dusty, but probably best because we discussed about whether that was uh, just going to create more understeer by doing that in the end, actually. And of course, the blue groove in itself being uh, comprised of rubber just turns into marbles when you add water to it as well so uh, probably wise to move yeah if they had watered that section it would have just turned into uh, sort of a sort of a, a, a muddy skating rink uh, and probably thrown a little bit more action our way but uh, it's certainly been enough of that there's Jake Swan then out in front and I think he's just passed the back marker that's Michael Bradbury again for the third time today he's managed to do that now over the ski jump he goes and Jake just completely composed putting that round at Finley well behind him uh, where he didn't have probably as much success as uh, I think he would have liked to really get him hustled in that round to be fair and uh, really making amends for that today here at Blighton some absolute brilliant driving from him and uh, just looks so composed and calm out in front isn't he yeah Jake Swan looking like the uh, the man that we've seen earlier in the season very very comfortable in the lead on the pace driving his own race and there's the last lap flag and barring mechanical difficulties or divine intervention I think Jake Swan is going to make it three out of three here at Blighton Park today well as you're a commentator don't curse him but uh, here's Danny Kerwood then coming under the tensions of Gordon Knox a man behind him and seeing these two locked in battle all afternoon actually Gordon Knox still giving chase and uh, great to see him uh, up there yeah, sorry, I, I, I just threw you a look that confused you slightly. I, I, I had the phrase opportunity knock sent to my head and I had to stop myself saying it. And I've said it anyway now just to stop me from looking confused. Well, uh, yeah, Gordon suffering a score of hard knocks because Danny Kerwood's managed to get the measure over him all afternoon too while we're uh, going fantastic on it. But uh, Jake Swan out in front, half a lap to go then. And it uh, looks like he's going to take this one, I reckon, though. Yeah, Jake's one looking very, very comfortable. As we've said, I think you could see uh, in Jake's eyes on the grid in the first race of the day, after doing a great job in qualifying, he really, really wanted to put a marker down after having a bit of a nightmare at Finmere and uh, now Jake Swan comes to take his final win of the day in the final race of the day three out of three for Jake Swan in the 650 Super Lights well Phil Redfern having a real challenge with Tim Page right to the line there and I thought he was going to steam it right around the outside didn't quite pay off Whew, but some real excitement to the finish there Jake Swan taking the win making the journey from the Kent coast well worth it then up to Blyton Park this afternoon taking three wins out of three ahead of Tony Turner in Superlight Race 3 and Anthony Jackson 2 in third then Tim Page Phil Redfern Danny Kerwood Gordon Knox Wayne Stockbridge and Michael Bradbury the nine drivers in 650 Superlight Race 3 so uh, well done to all the drivers concerned Tony, how have you found the day's racing? Yeah, good day's racing. Really nice track, really enjoyed the weekend. Um, nice, fast and flowing, tight and twisty in places. Um, had a good day coming back from a third overall from Finmere. Um, I was hoping to do a little bit better today, obviously second or first, and I think I've had a second overall. Three seconds, really chuffed to bits for that. Jake Swan was flying, couldn't keep up with him. But uh, it was all about tyre choice and the starts. I kept out of trouble and uh, just tucked in behind Jake and took three seconds. I had uh, Anthony Jackson and Phil Redfern behind me giving me a bit of, bit of an OG and A, you know, trying to get past, but I kept it nice and tight. So that was the main thing and good result. What is it about this track that you like so much? Uh, the tarmac is just beautiful here. The whole, oh, the whole track is just a very nice track and it suits me down to the ground. I'm very happy here and just get on with it and it's lovely. I find it really interesting that yourself and Tony, who was in second, have a completely different tyre setup. He's got the slicks on the rear, you've gone for the full wets. Tell me about that. What made you go for that decision? Um, we took them out yesterday and it just sort of popped up for trying them because they were on the car when we got here and it flew. And I'm not, it's black magic tyres. I've got no idea, but they just work and I stuck with it and they just work really, really well. So let's take a quick look at the 650 standings then. Anthony Jackson still the man who leads the championship with 359 to Jake Swan fighting back with 348 ahead of Tony Turner with 331. Not far behind Phil Redford in fourth place too. But some great driving this afternoon and Jake Swan doing enough to really fight back and still, as I said earlier, put one hand on the trophy, but he's got to beat Anthony Jackson for it. The top man today, Jake Swan, join us again for the open action after the break. British Superlight Championship, sponsored by wanttoliveafloat.com.
the British Superlight Championship, sponsored by wantsaliverflow.com. Welcome back to Blyton Park. We've seen some great racing this afternoon. Duncan Macbeth sets himself up for his third pole position race of the afternoon. The final race in Open Superlight Race 3. Jonathan Bennett and James Addy start alongside him on the front row. On row 2 is Phil Lee with Mark Richardson and Danny Whitney. On row 3 is Charlie Wellborn with James Stevens and Alan Henley. So the drivers on the grid for the final Open Superlight race of the day. There the lights go out and the drivers get off the grid. That's a good start again from uh, the man in the 72 machine. That's Jonathan Bennett. But this time he gets to the front and gets the better of Duncan Macbeth. And Duncan Macbeth finds himself in second place and could risk losing the option for the three out of three race wins here today, Chris. Well, it's more it's gone very wide as well there. He has gone very, very wide, actually. And uh, having a look around the outside of Jonathan Bennett. But that is basically no man's land here at Blyton. And Phil Lee pops it up the inside. No surprise to me there, to be fair. James Addy too having a look, but not quite able to do it. So work to do. And Mark Stevens being very, very wide there too. Don't think it cost him a place, but uh, I'm sure he'll learn the lesson the hard way and maybe look to correct that he's, uh, on his next time around. In fact, uh, yeah, the rest of the drivers just coming through there, actually. Just looking at uh, number 74. That's uh, Charlie Wellborn ahead of Danny Whitney here. Yeah, Mark Richardson at the back in that yellow super light. All sorts of problems for Mark Richardson. Not quite sure what he was doing, but he picked up a very large berm on the outside of the track, which uh, didn't allow him to go very fast or very forward. No, he didn't, uh, and that's what I, I just paused to have a look at, actually, just to see the gap behind him. Uh, there are some drivers, actually, still behind him, but the battle really on Danny Whitby. Putting the challenge on Charlie Wellborn here as they come down this main straight. Pops it up the inside, and does he make it stick? He just about gets the wheels ahead. And moves back into the line then. Of, uh, it was very tight Charlie actually Wellborn. for Danny Whitney, wasn't it? He was off the circuit on the inside tarmac and uh, outside of the white line, which is the new tarmac that's been laid here at Blyton Park. But that one there, 150, Duncan Macbeth finding himself in the very unfamiliar position of actually following somebody around Blyton Park today. Yeah, he's been a class act all afternoon, but Jonathan Bennett, you know, I said earlier really got a lot of pace today he's made a couple of mistakes that have cost him some big points he just needs to keep it together really and uh, perhaps drive a bit defensively because he can control the race now but he's absolutely rinsing it he's really going for it and uh, proving to everyone that he's more than capable of uh, of winning not just a race but possibly uh, you know a real contender for the British Championship now Duncan going Macbeth wide got the drive there Chris definitely got the drive you can see oh and that contact out. there for uh, number 74 Charlie Wellborn he's had to make a a quick exter excursion into Scunthorpe, I think, there. <laughs> He's definitely gone on a detour to get out of the way of Mark Richardson, who was steaming through from behind there. Last of the late breakers, Mark Richardson, and uh, I would imagine that uh, the Charlie Wellborn was thinking, ooh, that was rather rude. Yes, well, we're briefly on board with James Addy there, and he's got his attention set on Phil Lee, and uh, this could be a colossal battle between these two. Phil Lee, if I'm honest, this season looks to be driving a lot more aggressively than I've seen him driving in the past. He has been so calm and composed. And I think with him not being able to lead and control the championship a little bit this year, as he has done previously, I think maybe, you know, he's just... The frustration's coming out and he's driving a little bit and, and probably Addy and Phil Lee driving very, very similar styles. Now, the pressure really mounting on Jonathan Bennett here from uh, Duncan Macbeth here still. Yeah, Duncan Macbeth, as we said, he's got so much pace that he's been running all day as he comes out of the squiggly section onto that big, long start-finish straight and uh, he wasn't able to carry the speed through because there was somebody else's super light in the way and that just really balked him and now he's got to try and do oh, it the Benny hard way. Wide. Fantastic move there. Again, we got the slow in, fast out. Duncan Macbeth, brilliant move. And I was just going to say a little bit earlier that he looked like he was just sitting there stalking the man in front of him, Jonathan Bennett, and in the end, he's oh. had him, but he's had him. Somebody was definitely running wide, but that was on board with the James Addy as Phil Lee ran wide. We were preoccupied with a brilliant move from Duncan Macbeth, but again, Duncan, a little bit too much pace into the corner. Managed to sort it out and miss those bales that time, though. Well, I wonder if he was doing that deliberately to keep off the blue groove. Maybe he's finding that's not working for him. I can't see why, but he's uh, certainly looking to power his way around the dirt on the outside. One lap left to go, and Duncan Macbeth sets himself back up as the race leader in this. The dust are flying in the background, I'm not sure. Uh, oh, there we go. There's uh, Mark Richardson there as it spun it. Full 360 to get himself back on circuit. That's at the top end of the uh, 
of the circuit. So he rejoins. I don't think it will cost him a place, but uh, we didn't see by the time he cut into it. No, that was definitely uh, Mark Richardson just carrying too much speed as he entered the second dirt section and uh, ran on. Was fortunate not to have a, a bigger problem that stopped him rejoining. He must have bailed out of it somehow. But uh, Duncan McBeth is on the last lap and he's going over the, uh, the jump, the ski jump. Jonathan Bennett in uh, second place now. Uh, disappointed, I would imagine. He really thought that he was in with a shout of getting his first race win and uh, not to be, unfortunately. And that man, Duncan McBeth, has done some disappearing off into the distance, but now he's got uh, the back marker, Alan Henley, in the number 46 Super Light to contend with. Alan will uh, briefly possibly see the chequered flag and uh, think that uh, his life's changed, but uh, not yet. <laughs> yeah, well, a great victory then for Duncan McBeth. A well earned uh, victory and a great pass too. And uh, yeah, Jonathan Bennett's probably going to be pretty. Uh, annoyed with himself for allowing that I think the phrase I said earlier in the race was control and he just went a little bit hot and a bit deep and that cost him but Duncan McBeth the winner of Open Superlight Race 3, 35 points to him ahead of Jonathan Bennett in second place James Addy taking third ahead of Phil Lee, Danny Whitney, Mark Richardson Alan Henley, James Stevens, and Charlie Wellborn, the nine drivers let's get down to Paddock for reaction then with Vicky Monk James, we've been struggling to catch up with you since you've been racing super lights, and I'll be honest, I didn't even expect to see you here today. Yeah, I didn't think I would be after the last meeting, but it's one of them things, I'd rather be here doing something than being at home doing nothing. How are you feeling after that? Tell us what happened again. I don't know, I just went over the jump, next thing I know I was dragged into the trees and, and it hurts, that's all I know. Uh, so I did decide to pack in, because obviously the time I've had off with my wrist packing in the supermoto, and then hurt it again doing that. I thought it was, I thought it was invincible. Well, you got to learn you don't bounce, but uh, you were still out racing anyway. How is the wrist? Uh, it's all right, as long as I don't clip anything with the front wheel. Uh, I did it in that race, and that hurt. And I did it in the race before, trying to make a pass for second place, and that hurt, but I'll just get through it. I think uh, you've got to have a fine line of aggression. Um, you know, you've got to have a good balance, and uh, just keeping it smooth. And, you know, I was running full wet, so I was also conscious of not overheating them really easily overheat them on this so I was you know real nice and neat not trying to spin up the wheels you know it's a lot of fun spinning up the wheels and going sideways everywhere but it's not quick and uh, just keep it neat and tidy and uh, yeah the tyres still look good at the end of the day. So Duncan McBeth is the man who leads the British Championship in the Open class 369 points to Mark Richardson's 351 just six points behind is Phil Lee but don't forget about Danny Whitby still there and thereabouts in fourth. But some great driving today from Duncan McBeth. Three wins out of three for him, including an awesome race three today. He takes the top step and leads the British Open Championship. That's it from us here today. We'll see you next time. Superlight Championship, sponsored by OnceAliverFloat.com.